Hey everyone, if you're watching this, it's most likely because you're struggling with the corners of an object lifting off the build plate. It's pretty common, most of us have run into that problem. There are a few things you can do, but if you've already confirmed that your first layer is spot on and your temps are all correct, um, one of the things that you can try to do is add these small uh, helper disks or lily pads, whatever you wanna call them, to your object uh, at those sharp corners that you're struggling with. And that can help relieve or sort of balance the stresses at those corners and reduce the amount that they actually peel back and lift off. So this video is going to show you how to do that in Prusa Slicer. 2.5.2 is what I'm using right now, but this should be pretty consistent across 2.4 and 2.6 versions as well. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to select your box or your object uh, that you are struggling with. Um, and once you select it, it'll highlight green with these white corners. That's uh, showing you that it's correct and it's the uh, focus object. You're then going to right click while your mouse is on top of the object. You're going to go on down to add part. And then you're going to go to the gallery. And this is essentially a standard STL gallery that Prusa loads into the Prusa slicer by default. Um, and what we're looking for is the STL called helper disk. When you click that, you can go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see a few things have happened. First thing is you have this new cylinder that's about one layer tall sitting in the, on the print bed. Second thing you'll notice is that when you select your original object, it also selects the uh, cylinder that we added as one new object. And then over here in the hierarchy on the right, you'll notice that the original part has now been branched off into uh, having two subcomponents: the original part and the helper disk. Now, a few things. Uh, first things first, if you wanna move the helper disk around independently, you'll notice that you can't actually do that by just clicking on the object. So it doesn't matter how many times you try to just click that helper disk, it will still move as one object with the original object that you had. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is actually go over and select the helper disk.stl that was added under your part. Now it's only selecting that helper disk and you can drag that around independently however you'd like. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is put it approximately so that the center of the helper disk is at the corner of the object that you're struggling with. And you can actually add as many of these as you'd like to the part, but for now, we'll just do it on the one. Second thing that you're going to want to make sure is this helper disk.stl has to be reordered to be higher than the original object that you have. So you're going to want to go over into the tree on the right. You're going to want to left click on it to highlight it. And then you're going to want to drag that object up so that it drops on top of the original object that you had you'll see that the, the order has now reversed and the helper disk is above the box in this hierarchy. From there, we're going to go ahead and click on the settings cog over on the right of the helper disk.stl. And we're going to add a layers and perimeter setting option. From that, you'll see down at the bottom, there's a perimeter section we're going to change that from whatever your default is or whatever your print settings are to 99. The last um, check item that we're going to just verify because older versions actually didn't have this uh, selected by default is up in the print settings, you can click the little cog um, over here, or you can go to the print settings tab um, on the left hand side at the top. You're going to want to navigate to the advanced section. And then down here where it says clip multi-part objects, you're going to want to make sure that that is selected. And like I said, by default, this should be selected now in 2.5 and newer versions. But if you're in 2.4, that's, that's not going to be selected. So you want to really make sure that that is, is selected. Then you go back to your plater and you should be able to see that when you slice, you have this helper disk that was added <clears throat> showing its own perimeters that are separate from the object that you originally had, as well as the object having its own perimeters separate from the helper disk. And 
you'll notice that there's a slight jog where the helper disc starts um, and ends. What that is, is actually the elephant foot compensation for the first layer. You'll see that actually, you know, on the backside that that first layer is skinnier than the second layer. And that's just to, to help some of the elephant's foot. When you have an object touching um, your part, it just doesn't apply that elephant's foot compensation for that section. Um, but this is what it should look like when it's done correctly. <clears throat> You'll see, like I said, the, the perimeters are separate. This will be easy to remove after the print and it, it prints the objects without interfering with each other. A couple of things that uh, you might see if you do this incorrectly, um, as we mentioned before, if these are in the wrong order and the helper disc is actually lower than the box, if I slice that, you'll see it actually prints with a priority on the helper disc and it cuts into your original object. This is not what you want. This won't give you the, the kind of shape uh, that you're originally trying to print and it will end up being really hard to remove and it won't look very clean. If the order is correct, but you forget to do the layers and perimeters, so I'll just delete that. What you'll see is it actually combines the two objects. So there's no perimeter separating the two objects. They're, it's just kind of one solid outline and then the infill um, continues over. This will not separate cleanly. You'll end up with, um, you know, basically an ugly uh, part of the print you have to cut and it won't have a consistent um, outer perimeter to it. So really not good, not what you want. And then um, let's say you did all that right, but you're on an older version of Prusa Slicer and this clip multi-part objects is not selected. What you'll end up seeing <clears throat> is that both objects will actually be printed overlapping each other. And the reason you don't want this is because you're going to have a lot of excess, you know, uh, filament in this section. It's going to print really badly. Um, nothing will separate correctly. It'll probably have enough ooze to crash the nozzle into something. It's just, it's not going to be good. Um, so if you make sure those things are correct, um, in addition to making sure that the part is actually, uh, in the correct, um, you know, merged with your original part, you should get that nice clean separation layer between the two. Uh, in addition to that, if you, uh, the, the last way that I'll show you, if you accidentally, um, forget to have the object selected when you add the box. So let's go back to just having the box. If you don't select this, if you right click on the build plate instead, and you add that helper disc, what you'll see is, first of all, it throws it in as a separate object. And you can try to put this in the correct orientation. You can try to then slice it. You'll see <clears throat> it does something similar uh, to one of the other failure modes I showed you before, and it actually prints both of the objects on top of each other. So again, you'll have you know filament oozing over and, and overlapping, and it's just not good. You know, it's not going to work to recover this. You could delete it and then select the object and re add it. Um, but another way you can do it is actually by selecting both objects over in the tree. Um, and then if you right click over top of them, you can see that there's an option to merge. That'll give you essentially the same thing that you would have had if you did it correctly, where these are both seen as a singular object with two subcomponents underneath. And then you can do the same thing as I showed you earlier, which is reordering them, adding the layers and perimeter settings. Sorry, uh, adding the layers and perimeter settings and then setting that to 99. And you can see it slices perfectly again. So yeah, hopefully this helped. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, if you have any ideas for other things that I should make videos on, tutorials, just let me know.